drawing people into the sport of cyclocross in Blacksburg. And, and we saw a picture of, like I said, Spencer earlier uh, participating in one of the cyclocross events. So every Tuesday evening during the fall and winter, they get together and practice skills. Uh, they do little mini races. Um, and people who had really never even thought that they could do cyclocross, which is kind of like a steeplechase on a bike, um, uh, they've gone on to be really good competitors. Um, we have a big monster institution in, uh, in Blacksburg called Virginia Tech. Um, and this is Debbie Freed, who's in the audience with us today. Debbie is the alternative transportation coordinator, um, and she's, she's involved in a lot of the projects that I've already mentioned, the, the Fix Best, the, uh, she's just involved. Um, <laughs> she's got a lot of people that, uh, she's had a few people come through her program uh, as interns. Uh, one that I want to highlight is Lindsay uh, McKeever, who is the one at the red head in the center there. Um, Lindsay organized an event this spring called Cycle Sheep, which was a, a really fantastic event. Um, it brought together some national speakers. Um, it brought together different, all, all the different parts of the cycling community, um, and it culminated in a fashion show. Through Lindsay uh, and through Debbie Freed, I met this guy, Michael Kulikowski. I'm almost done. So, um, Michael Kulikowski is a design student at Virginia Tech, and um, he brought an organization to Virginia Tech this past spring called Design for America. And it's a group that goes visits campuses. They have a short, intensive work session to encourage students to identify a, a social problem or a social issue, a brainstorm it for two hours, and then go out and fix it in the community. A small project that has a big impact. So. Um, they tackled uh, uh, commuting by bike or by walking. So what they did is they made up these little signs that indicated the number of minutes to walk or to ride to a particular destination. So a 15 minute walk from campus gets you to Kroger, uh, a five minute ride gets you to the library, um, and they posted these all around the town. Now, like Jason Roberts said, that's against the uh, town code, <laughs> but they did it anyway. I, I thought they were beautifully done signs, and. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see some more of that later this fall. So, anyway. <laughs> and the last picture is, um, this is my husband, and I have to put it up there because um, um, he's really my favorite, uh, most favorite bicycle advocate that's out there. Uh, one, because he lets me do these things, um, and he doesn't make too much noise about it. <coughs> Two, he's an ex Excel expert and a great money manager, so he finds money for me to do things. <laughs> and so um, he contributes a lot to the behind the scenes thing. So even though there are all these other people out there doing things very publicly, there are also people who work behind the scenes who aren't as public and they're making a big contribution as well. So like I said, but we're trying to build community through cycling. So I just wanted to throw this out. 
I think that's missing on the technology infrastructure piece is really the community, you know, involvement, the community demand, the community support and encouragement. So I just wanted to throw that out there that, you know, if there's anybody who feels strongly about wanting to have more affordable um, choices for your broadband access at home or at your business or what you could really leverage if you could have better access, you know, all, all of us can do email and that's fine. But, you know, if you want to do, if you want to work for a company in North Carolina or Northern Virginia and you want to live in Blacksburg where we have this great quality of life, you're going to need better broadband access than we can currently get from the providers. And if we could understand what the demand is at the community level, the town can use that as leverage to get that from the providers and to get the price down and to get more competition in. So I just want to throw that out there again because technology is part of the whole head um, focus. And if anybody has suggestions, ideas, wants to be a part of this, you can contact me, Brenda Van Gelder, Director of Last Year Electronic Village. Thank you. Um, I found out early this spring that I have a young cousin, well, 30 maybe, <laughs> that's young to me. Uh, making her living as a pedicab driver in Portland, Oregon. And you're talking about biking and community building through biking made me realize that when uh, College Avenue gets remodeled, um, it'd be a wonderful place for a pedicab stand. And as I came downtown today, I saw the sidewalk crowded with people. And I know um, when this whole remodeling gets finished, I'll be of an age where I would love to have a little pedicab ride around town. <laughs> and, um, I wonder, John, do you know anything about the code in regard to that kind of a vehicle? And can I encourage you all to think about pedicabs in the future down the right Elizabeth, I don't know particularly about that, but I think it's something that if we can get more information on it, it's something we consider. We have good people in the public works department that are very uh, inspired by bringing new forms of transportation and new energy sources, being at least as intelligent as we can be as a town. Um, and so if there are good ideas out there, I'm sure there are that we haven't considered or not quite aware of yet, just help us become aware of them. I'm Mike Hudson. I, uh, am, I, I run a uh, little experiment in uh, hyper-local social networking. <clears throat> uh, my website is progressinmaine.com. Uh, I chose that name because it's a complicated intersection uh, to navigate, but it's also where neighborhoods meet Main Street and downtown. Uh, it was also born out of uh, a, little a little bit of frustration uh, having been on the Town Gown Community Relations Committee and struggling to actually get things accomplished there. Um, so what I, I wanted to create a website where uh, anybody could come and join and uh, blog about what's going on there, use uh, Web 2.0 video technologies to uh, relate the experiences that they're having in, in their neighborhoods and in their communities, and also, uh, much like Facebook, form groups. I wanted everybody to be able to find uh, their church group, their PTA, their neighborhood group, uh, and we have some of those set up on Progress in Maine, right? Uh, Progress in Maine .com right now in that section, uh, and they're they're really interesting uh, way of working. There, you can do private groups there if you want to do them by invitation only, uh, but it's a it's a really easy way to incorporate social media into change. Where and it, and then on the website, everything the focus of it is localism. So I'd, I'd like to invite everyone uh, to uh, sign up, create an account there. If your neighborhood organization's not on there, uh, please create it. If your church group's not on there, please create it. Like I said, PTAs, uh, I'm, I'm all about advancing local businesses. When I do go to uh, sell advertising, I haven't yet, uh, it will be uh, for pretty much locally owned businesses only. I'm really, it's, I, have a, I have a localism agenda, so <laughs> thank you very much.
have a question for John, since he's our government representative on the panel. Um, a few years ago, whenever it was that the free press um, went away, there was a group of young people and then some of us middle-aged and now older people who supported them who had an idea for some kind of pop-up business that was going to be a community um, library for social change and it was also going to be a meeting space. In other words, it's going to fill some of the things that the free press had done in the community while it was here. Um, and they worked for a long time, but they met great uh, frustration in terms of ever getting the play completely off the ground. Um, one of those young people is still here, or at least she's employed. Um, uh, Liam Kelly, who's a little bit older, but certainly younger than me, is still here. A couple of us in my age range are still here. Given this, and the whole idea of creating things first and then figuring out the more complicated stuff later, how do you do that in Blacksburg? I don't have the answers. Okay. Could you repeat the question so we could hear it? Pardon? Could you repeat the question so we could hear it? Um, Beth, would you like to come use this microphone and read? I'm really shy. But we all we all need to. Can I just talk louder from yeah, here? Stand up. Stand up and, and make it shorter. <laughs> I don't stand very well. I have orthopedic problems. Can everybody hear me if I talk that loud? I'm wondering how you make this pop-up idea happen in Blacksburg. And I referenced the idea that happened a few years back where there was a group that was going to um, sort of fill the gap of the free press and have a meeting space and a library for social change. Did you hear that? Um, again, I think it takes committed individuals. It, it takes people like Lindsay who started to make sure that places like the Lyric open up. It takes people like um, Catherine Albright and the folks who have started the farmer's market. And it takes committed individuals to see an idea through. Uh, I think what the town can do as a governmental entity is to try to assist in helping to make those things happen by either not standing in the way, getting rid of regulations <coughs> that for whatever reason appear to be in the way, and also through different government assistance and making sure that the right people are talking to the right other folks, um, helping to make those things happen. Um, I think we see plenty of examples of those sorts of events beginning to take place in our community, yeah. whether it's or whether it's uh, Mike Rosenzweig and the Seeds at the Price House. I mean, there's just there's numerous things that are happening, and some that are already in the works. Uh, we have a new cultural foundation and a museum group that's commit, uh, committed to saving some of our older buildings, uh, like the St. Luke's Hot Hall, Hall out nearby Wendy's, and of course the Black House is going to be starting to be restored this fall, this September. Um, and so it, it, it really takes commitment, it takes time, it takes energy, and in some cases it takes money. Um, but what I think we have here, though, is the right kind of place, the right kind of community to, to do that. Um, and I think we're going to see in the next year or two some really amazing things happening in our downtown, both in the immediate downtown as well as maybe at First and Main down in the South Bay. Port. So I, you know, my, my answer is, I don't have answers, particularly as an individual, much less as an elected official, but what I think we can do is make sure we're listening to people and help them create um, uh, the sorts of spaces and places that they like. You know, what Mr. Roberts says in this, in this uh, TED Talk is, is extremely inspiring because it is, it is really in some ways that simple. Show up, name it, and, and participate. And I think that's what we're all asking folks to do by this kind of engagement is to, is to inspire people to whatever their little germ of an idea is to help get out there and find the folks and help make it happen. Can okay, I just make one announcement of my little germ of a thing? Um, I've started a project called Sampler, which is the Southern Appalachian Media Project for Environmental Literacy, so at least it has a name, Sampler. Um, and Anybody who's got some kind of um, coverage of something that's cultural or political that has to do with making our region 
our town, it doesn't have to be the region, um, a better place is um, invited that they can write a guest post and I'll just edit it to make sure that it links and does all those kinds of things that make for good internet journalism, but um, I issue that invitation. Thank you very much. Uh, it's just a I'm going to wrap up. We've gone a little bit longer than we wanted to, but we had some great conversation. I know some of us have to be back to work. We've got to show some movies. But for our first event, this was a tiny little idea that someone had. We've got a couple of people who volunteered some time. I want to thank the Leader Council for their support, the Leader Theater, and our task force uh, for helping put this together. I particularly want to thank our uh, group, our dialogue group here today, who came and shared their ideas and their vision for the community. And I want to thank all of you. We had 80 people show up today. <coughs> share some ideas and talk about some fun things. We're going to try to do it once a month. The next one will be August 9th, and the topic is yet to be determined. There are thousands of opportunities.